We name Lake Itasca to be the headwaters of the Mississippi, but there are many lakes and small streams nearby that also feed the mighty river. This is Big LaSalle Lake, just three miles from Itasca. Here at the south end, we see LaSalle Creek flowing into the lake. Following LaSalle Creek upstream, we see that it meanders through what's called a fresh wet meadow, forested wetlands, and other types of wetlands, all just turning green in this early spring video. Each of these water-rich habitats is tightly connected to and dependent on its neighboring habitats. In other words, complicated and ever-changing flows of water, nutrients, and life are woven together here in what we refer to as the LaSalle Valley Ecosystem Complex. These wetlands are part of the Mississippi, and they protect it from pollution and floods by filtering and storing water. Enbridge's Line 93, called Line 3 during its construction, was built directly through the LaSalle Valley Ecosystem Complex and across LaSalle Creek. In total, Enbridge dug the pipeline through hundreds of water bodies and thousands of acres of wetlands in northern Minnesota, many of which are now experiencing ongoing environmental damage, one example of which is here at the LaSalle Valley. Going back the land surface, this diagram illustrates in simplified form the many layers of soil and sediment that naturally developed here over millennia. There are layers and lenses of sand, gravel, and portrayed here in yellow, a more continuous layer of silt and clay. That silt and clay layer caps what is called a confined aquifer of pressurized water deeper down, indicated here by blue. Some of that water naturally escapes up to the surface, creating small spring-fed ecosystems. When Enbridge trenched through the LaSalle wetlands, they installed steel sheet piling up to 30 feet deep to stabilize the trench walls. The sheet piling punched through the confining layer of clay, causing the deeper groundwater to erupt to the surface in many places. Enbridge and Barr responded by proposing to inject grout, basically concrete, into the holes. In the end, they inserted about 135 23 foot long steel pipes throughout this valley and injected over 51,000 gallons of grout. Basically, in this delicate system of wetlands, they've created a permanent underground reinforced concrete wall over 20 feet high in places and 2.5 football fields in length. They call this a fits. We call it a preventable tragedy because it acts like a dam and permanently interrupts water flowing through the wetland soils to LaSalle Creek. And it's but one of many breaches that have not yet been disclosed to the public, nor as far as we can tell, thoroughly investigated. What's more, their fix didn't work. Groundwater is still escaping to the surface. This thermal imagery of the area was taken in late November 2021, when the ground was relatively cool in grays and blacks, but deep groundwater bubbling to the surface was relatively warm in white. You can also see that LaSalle Creek in white was still warm relative to the freezing ground. This close-up of one area shows what might be natural springs still flowing down the side of the valley, but also many suspicious warm areas that originate at the pipeline and flow downhill toward the creek. This thermal data was collected after Enbridge and Barr reported that they had fixed the site and no further groundwater was leaking. In this wider view, we see these suspected ongoing breaches extend for hundreds of feet along the valley. Between the time they reported the problem and then purportedly fixed it, Enbridge reported that 9.8 million gallons of groundwater was lost from the aquifer. And, despite their brute force grouting method, water continues to leak up toward the surface. Because that water has a different chemistry, it will change the nature of the wetlands in this place. And we don't know how grout will chemically react with groundwater over the long term. Finally, because the deeper aquifer is losing pressure, some natural springs and nearby wetlands could dry up. Additionally, Enbridge knew that they shouldn't pound sheet piling this deep in the LaSalle Valley because their own consultant, Bar Engineering, testified to that effect in court. Enbridge did it anyway. What did the LaSalle ecosystem complex look like while they were fixing the problem? You can see the very tops of the enormous corrugated metal sheet piling here, visible at the surface. You can see what Barr labeled in the caption as an uncontrolled flow of groundwater accumulating in muddy puddles. And you can see that the natural vegetation has been entirely cleared away and the natural soils are being massively disturbed and compacted. Was the devastation of LaSalle Valley preventable? Absolutely. 
As early as 2014, independent experts were raising red flags about the hazards of crossing this valley with a pipeline. State agency staff raised additional serious concerns. And during the Line 3 permitting process, other independent scientists alerted the state to these likely problems again. But Enbridge and Barr seriously downplayed the level of risk here in their filings with agencies and in court, ultimately convincing the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission to approve this route. Indeed, Enbridge and Barr misrepresented the level of risk from sheet piling in general, which was used extensively across this 330-mile project, but was barely mentioned in permit application documents. Disturbingly, the same company that argued vociferously in court that there was no data to suggest serious hydrologic problems might occur, was the same company then given the contract to design this highly invasive fix to the problem months later. Fred, is this problem? Very. This didn't just happen in the LaSalle Valley. Other aerial and on-the-ground water temperature and chemistry data collected by volunteers shows that Enbridge punctured aquifers at other locations, possibly dozens of locations across Minnesota. This video shows groundwater bubbling up precisely where Enbridge crossed the shore of an important wild rice lake. Wild rice is particularly sensitive to water level changes that could result from these eruptions of groundwater, and wild rice is sensitive to changes in water chemistry. In summary, the science says that common construction methods used to build pipelines, like the use of sheet piling to stabilize trenches, have significant and long-lasting hydrologic impacts. Bar engineering's preferred fix for these aquifer breaches is poorly understood, highly invasive, and will impact surficial hydrology for a span of geologic time. And construction zones create permanent disconnection between some water bodies, like wetlands that are bisected, and create new unnatural connections between others, like aquifers that are breached. What should happen now? Call the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and ask that they immediately impanel a group of independent scientists to study the extent of these aquifer breaches and design an ecologically sound strategy for monitoring or mitigation. This work should no longer be entrusted to Enbridge, Bar Engineering, and state regulators who have little expertise in pipeline construction. Also, the EPA and Army Corps of Engineers could push for an immediate public update on all investigations, findings, and enforcement actions. At the state level, advocate to shrink the role of the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission so it can no longer overrule the judgment of agencies charged with protecting Minnesotans and our natural resources.